Hello everyone, this is Aaron with SKU Suite again. Wanted to do a video tutorial around products and catalog management and focus in on all the features and functionalities around the products, pricing, images, and all the details that is required to create a product. Now we obviously have tools for importing and that you can import your products through a CSV template that we provide either one with custom attributes and pricing tiers or one without. And what that means is if you have custom attributes to a product that you created, then this will automatically update that template for you I mean, as long as same with uh, pricing tiers and this one doesn't have any custom attributes in it however you could still take this file and use it to import and add it right here on both scenarios so products let's talk a little bit about products and what that does so this is the full list of already existing created products and if you click on anything you'll get the full details on the right hand side you can view the location and view the history of this product you can edit the product right here by simply going to that and let's talk about some of these options UPC and barcode that is a UPC number barcode number if you don't have one we're automatically generating one for you item SKU this is your SKU. It could be anything. Um, it could change to whatever you want. It has to be unique. So UPC and SKU both have to be unique when adding to SKU Suite. Products model. If you have any model, uh, model it, it is. Name and title. If you want to use this data for exporting and creating a catalog, this is good. If you want to sync it to your Shopify on any updates, we can do that, or Magento, or any marketplace or e-commerce site that you have. Great way to keep everything in sync. Categories. We do we manage these categories. This is a subcategory V10 of sneakers. Um, it's a way to really keep track of everything that's going on, it's split up between categories and classifications. Classifications are similar to category, but it has a, a very unique difference. And that is if the classification within settings, uh, it requires you to input, does it require a unique identifier or it doesn't? What that means is, is the item serialized or not? Does it have an extra layer of inventory, which you'll be scanning in and out of the system? very important it it's either an accessory or like a TV type or a phone type where each TV each phone has a serial number on it and we could track that from receiving to shipping to returns it's very important this serial numbers there's tons of fraud returns these days and you have to keep track of that description your long description is the item drop shipped we need to know if the product is a drop shipped product hide on packing slip if you don't want it to be shown on a packing slip some customers use that option force tax it's not done yet but we are going to force the tax even if the customer is a not a tax exempt customer product is a service same here our existing clients right now are all doing this just by simply adding inventory to a labor service and it gives them really good insight into usage counts uh, profitabilities on that labor because there is a cost so to track that cost based on quantity is pretty cool how we can break that down and that will be in a later report and report uh, uh, later tutorial with reports uh, related SKUs are for websites to cross sell between one SKU and another vendor SKUs when you're creating a purchase order uh, this will auto populate to the vendor the vendor SKU that you input here images um, every marketplace has different requirements or minimums uh, sizes we tend to really abide by those when you're uploading. We can resize it, um, but it's really best that you should know these standard minimum sizes when you're uploading images. And pricing. Pricing, now let me explain to you. There's two different pricing rules. One is for sales orders and another one is for invoices. We separate the two because we have different types of clients that require a retail more environment when checking out a customer so it requires payment it it doesn't let you process or it automatically processes when you save um, if there is a payment already um, so there's some differences with invoices on our system versus a sales order but that's pretty much why you need to know that wholesale pricing here so these three tiers are designed for wholesale orders um, wholesale orders can be processed and shipped even if a customer didn't pay a sales order it cannot be fulfilled or shipped unless the customer pays. And this is a pricing tier for retail. You can add as many more as you need within the settings. Sales price, 
wholesale again. These are all the sales prices for wholesale. Um, this is going to start and end dates, and then those pricing won't auto populate anymore if it doesn't start or end during that time frame. And the retail sales order, same thing here. Retail sales price. Um, we can auto populate the pricing. The whole point of these pricing is to auto populate it in a scalable unified method. Clearance price, the same thing. If you have a clearance price, we this overrules all pricing if it's lower than anything else. Um, these two features are for websites like Magento. If it's featured or it's retailed uh, restrictions, that's an option. Discount rules, minimum quantities. Here you can kind of set up as many discount rules as you need. So if you have 50, you want to give a customer a special price on 50 or more, or you want to give a customer 100 and one or 100 pieces or more, you can do, you know, 599 for that and then 799. Actually, that doesn't make sense. It would be 699. And then for 50 piece it will be 799. So you're giving him a dollar cheaper on a discount of 100 pieces. You save that, you add this item to the invoice, this is the discount rules that will apply. This pricing will automatically populate based on if the quantity is 100 or more. Additional details, if the item is taxable, if the item is bulk or retail, we have a special functionality around bulk. So if you are selling bulk items and you want to package it up for the customer that's you know on site and you want to charge them for that, we can do packaging services for you. So you charge 50 cents or a dollar each package, retailed package item that you do for them. Uh, weight and dimensions are for shipping, alias, this is when a SKU um, it's being sold on Amazon, eBay, or different channels, but the SKUs, really the parent item is the same, but the SKU that it's selling on eBay or Amazon is very different. So with this, we get to map it to the master product, and when an order comes in with this alias, it, it is mapped automatically and able to process, or else the order will fail. Marketplace settings, seller SKU, ASIN, and FN SKU, these are important for FBA shipments if you're working with Amazon, you know what this is for. Attributes. Custom attributes, very simple. You can create as many custom attributes as you need on a product, and from there, you can save the data to the product anytime you want. Customs information, we have the description, the tariff code, and the country of origin, both all three, if you're doing a lot of international shipments, you need that. And then reorder levels, minimum quantity, reorder amount, reserved quantity, and lead time. All part of formulas within our system. So this is breakdown of editing a product. For sync and clear sync, if you're forcing sync to a marketplace to update the product count, you can do that. Uh, you can clear the sync so it doesn't update. These are all functions of a product. And over here, you could copy this product to another product. You can check the inventory, you could check the location, you could check the history, you could print the barcode, or you can save any changes. So I did change some things, but this is the demo count, so we can save that. So that's pretty much editing a product. It's pretty much the same on create, and it's creating a combo. It's pretty much the same on creating a regular product. You have all the different options. I would say the difference here between edit and create is the variations. So we can add variations to different attributes that a customer has and quickly create. So if you have a shirt that comes in seven different colors, seven different sizes, seven different you know lengths, and you want to just automatically create all those products from one time, you're, we would do that. You would just add all these different options that you have. And it's again, it's just creating a product that has nothing to do with inventory yet. These are products, and products and inventory are separate, but they do obviously have some you know correlation on the bat database. Inventory goes into products. Um, but this is how you can go and create the images for you know size 6, 12, 16, 28. You can add as many images as you want. And that's pretty much the difference between a creating a product from scratch versus editing. The variations, you can't create any variations from editing a product. So this is just now creating a product. Let's talk about bundles and kits. Here is a create combo product. Now we call it combos. It's the same thing as a bundle kit, but we like to just be a little bit different on our terminologies. Um, what this means on a combo is you can have it two ways. 
a combo can either exist of one skew but five pieces or it could be a set of different skews and you build that choice so if you want to just do one skew here you just added that in it's going to ask you to create all the options for this combo just like a product but now it's a combo and we're keeping track of it you can add as many quantity for this combo you'll name it you know test skew combo one whatever you want to name it and we could synchronize this to your website or even amazon ebay and make sure inventory is completely perfect with that and then you can obviously create and add more skews here and that would be another bundled kit so there's two options on a bundle kit and we cover both of them if you want to view it and edit it uh, you can do that by just going to combo list and seeing that these are dummy products created and dummo, dummy um, combos created, but you can edit them at any time. And when a product is out of stock and you don't need to see it anymore, we can just simply put the item and make it inactive. Another way that we keep this clean, we have clients with, you know, let's say 20, 30 th different, 30,000 different SKUs. This is really a quick way and easy way to manage that. Hope you like this video. If you have any questions about products and catalog management and what we could do with the products, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Um, hope this video helped and we appreciate your time. Have a great day.